Hello guys and welcome back to the second part for the custom furnace tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is the block procedures and the, the third part will cover the GUI uh, display conditions. So I didn't get much sleep last night so I'm, I might be a little bit not cognitive of what I'm describing. I'm trying my best though with no sleep it's really hard to actually get through this. So. I'm going to do my best to explain and take it from one step at a time, though it might be a little longer than it probably could be, so bear with me. Um, so we're going to look at the, let's see here, the actual random client display tick. This is the procedure that, if you remember, we were looking at the when the block is on. Uh, it's this block right here, the procedure. Uh, on random client display tick. So what we're doing here is I'm calculating the particles when the furnace actually turns on. So there is smoke particles that come out the chimney. So we can actually see where the chimney is on the uh, block here. It's this part right here. So I wanted the particles to come out directly in the center, but there's a problem with that. There is an uneven amount of pixels between here and it doesn't look like it but there is it's actually a three by three pixel part so I can't just measure by pixel because that won't work I need to actually measure um, a exact uh, center of that pixel and for that I calculated the math uh, based on the um, pixel itself so I need to get the pic each pixel first and then I needed to divide that again to get the half a pixel. So this one, this is the value for half a pixel. And then this is the value for uh, one single pixel. So from there, what I needed to do is calculate the position of where this is and for each rotation. So this is a little harder to explain because uh, by default, um, it's always facing in the, in block bench. It's always facing the actual direction of north, right? But we need to calculate from the axis point where all these uh, lines meet. So this part right down here, uh, how many up, how many over, and um, basically how many off to the side. So this will make sense in a second once I get into the paint program, which is easier to show. So this is the layout for the top of the furnace itself, right? So we can turn it like this and we can see that there is the um, top. And we need to know how to get into that center pixel. So we're actually going to calculate, assuming that this is north, uh, this is the north side, we're going to calculate how many down. So there's exactly 12 pixels until we get to this part right here. I'll just change a different color so it's a little easier. So that pixel right there, that indicates the 12th pixel from the very bottom here. So we know that we need to multiply that by 12. Um, so what we needed to do, if we open up the math again, uh, the long distance, which is going based on this direction all the way from here to here, is going to calculate this math. So we're going to get our, our solid pixels, we're going to multiply that by the amount of pixels that we need to travel, minus the one that we're actually going for the center. There's a reason for that. Uh, then we need to, we get a value of 0 0.75. So then we take 0 0.75 and then we add our half a pixel. And that makes it so it gets directly in the center of that pixel there. So it's only going halfway in, and then that calculates the exact position. For the short end, uh, we only need to calculate three times, and then half a pixel, which is the math on this part. So with that being said, that's where the values I'm getting for the actual procedures here for the X and Z location. The Y position is just one pixel above the actual block. Um, I didn't really need to calculate too much for the Y position. The only difference is I needed to calculate the rotations and that um, I just basically rotated, uh, selected the entire model itself. And then I went into transform, rotate, 
and then the X, uh, the 90 version. And then I basically just shifted everything back over this direction. And then I calculated from the X axis again. So again, this bottom corner, and then I calculated how many that way and how many this way. So in this case, it's only three by three. So, and if we look at our M creator version, it should say the lower number right here. So the lower one is the uh, 0 0.21875. So and the, the higher number is 0 0.79125. Uh, it, it's not really irrelevant too much, but we're just getting the direction and everything like that. So how to build this procedure? Um, you guys probably want to know how to do that. So we'll go ahead and grab an if statement. And we're going to add, we're going to click on the gear icon and we're going to add two else if statements and then one else statement. Once you've gotten the actual uh, three points here plus the else statement, you can close the gear icon and just have that particular block. We can then go to the logic and get the orange block here, and we're gonna drag that over a couple times in just a second. We need to go to the block um, procedures and then go to the data tab, and we're gonna grab the get block, get direction of block provided block state, and then we're gonna to go to the Minecraft components and grab a directional block. Next, what we need to do is set the directional block to north and then duplicate uh, by right clicking on the main procedure uh, for the operator part. And then we're gonna duplicate that uh, two times until we get uh, it set up like this. Then we need to go ahead and set the east direction. And then finally the south direction, which the final version is actually going to be the west direction, but because our block only has the four directions for rotation, we don't need to take in consideration the up or down rotation. So we can just do that part. All right, so um, let's see here. We need to go to the world procedures and grab the particle for the uh, single particle, I believe it is. So it's this one right down here under actions, world procedures, actions, and then single particle. And just to make things a little bit easier to read, what we're going to do is we're going to basically right click on it and go external inputs. So we have a system like this. I used the um, campfire uh, cozy particle. So it's right near the top here. And once we've done that, I also decreased the velocity, which is the VY by uh, so it was like 0 0.1, so it doesn't go too far fast up into the sky. Uh, lastly, we need to do some math for the parts on the um, directional part. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to math components, and we're going to grab a math operator, this one right here. And then what we need to do is we need to actually plop this um, down on the the coordinate parts and what we need to do is actually go back to the math component and we need to grab a round block and we're going to round down the x y and z just in case that the procedure is run uh, somewhere not centered to the actual block itself we want to make sure that it always gets the access point of the that particular block so when we do add the math we know that it's going to be 100 percent sure in the location where it needs to be. So we're gonna round down for this. And once we can duplicate the values back over and then add our X, Y, and Z parts to the round down block. Lastly, we need a math number and then you're just gonna input your position into these parts. So basically you're gonna have a math number for each one of these. You can even du duplicate it from this part right here. And then you're just going to put that directly into the position after you've filled out the um, coordinates for the actual uh, position where the smoke should come out. Again, these are the positions. Um, the procedure will be in the download for the workspace if you want this exact same procedure. So that will be um, how to do that. So that's that procedure, how to program that part. Uh, let's move on to another one. 
So the next thing that we should probably cover is when the block is being added. We're actually setting the maximum smelting time here. Uh, to find this block, uh, what we need to do is go to the block procedures, actions, and then it's this particular MBT one right here. I've just called it maximum smelting, which is basically the duration, how long uh, the smelting process sh should take. So in our case, a regular furnace is 200 uh, in duration, where a blasting furnace is only 100 in duration. So this is the time that it takes to smelt a full item. Um, whatever value you put in here, if it's a lower number, it's going to take less time to smelt. If it's a higher number, it's going to take more time. So um, make sure when you set this up, that it's something like this. And that's all there is to that particular part. It's everything else is configured for that part. Uh, the smelting procedure, fuel procedure, and um, result procedure. I think the result one is actually used in the other two, so we'll cover this one first. So basically what this is doing is it's getting the... Um, let's see here. I think the output slot is slot one. Or can't remember what slot one is. I have to go and take a quick look. Let's go take a look at the uh, GUI here. Slot one is the input slot. So slot two is the fuel slot. So what we need to do is we need to test if there is an item in the input slot. And if that item is basically we're testing if the number is greater than zero. So we know that there is an item in that slot. And then we're testing if that item is basically not the smelting result of the item in that same slot. So if it's not the same item, or pardon me. So if the item, we're getting the smelting result of the item, and then we're testing for that particular item, because by default it would be an item stack. Uh, what we want to do is test for the input item though. So we're going to use the selector for the input slot and select the same slot ID. That way we can test if that particular smelting result is going to be an empty uh, or not an empty result. We're also testing uh, that the other option it is not the same result as the same item. I wasn't sure what uh, the result would be if it was if it was the same or didn't have a result. Um, it could have been returned the same thing or it could have returned something empty. I didn't know, so I basically added both of them just to be sure. Lastly, what we're doing is we're testing if the output slot is empty by testing for the amount of items in the output slot equals zero, or if the output slot, uh, getting the amount of the input, or pardon me, the output slot, and then we're testing if the maximum, if it's less than the maximum slot size or stack size of the smelting result, and then the um, output item, which is the slot that we want to test for, right? So we want to make sure that it's actually, no, that should be, should this be? One sec, I need to think. All right, so it is supposed to be a one, not a zero uh, for the slot idea. We need to test for the input slot because we're getting this smelting result. We want to make sure that the, um, the maximum stack size of the input slot, which is the result that we're going to get. Um, basically what it's doing on this line right here is it's going to check for the item in the in the input slot. It's going to test if that item can be smelted. We have already tested that it can be smelted, so we know that it will have a result. And we need to then check for the maximum stack size. So then we're just basically checking if the um, number in the output slot is the maximum stack size of the input slot when it's in the, the smelting result position. So again, this wasn't supposed to be zero. I will patch the workspace um, after this video is finished editing. So it needs to be a one for that. So basically in short, what this does is it just tests if the output slot um, can 
receive items in short. Um, it will basically calculate um, if there's a smelting result that can be made from the input and if there's space in the output down here for the actual uh, smelting result to be put into the output slot. Uh, the other thing that we're testing is right up here is to making sure that it's actually there's an item in the input slot. So we're returning the value for this and we're testing with a whole bunch of end statements. We'll just quickly build this. So to do that, what we need is to go to our flow control. We're going to start with the logic operator uh, because we're going to need to call this into another procedure, a few, well, a few of them. And then we're going to go to our logic, grab a light blue, same blue as the logic one, and we're going to click on the equal sign, go and, and then we're going to go into external inputs. And we're going to du duplicate this um, three times. So we get a system like that. You might notice that this one is or. We're going to click on this one and we're going to set this one to or as well. And then we're going to need two not blocks, which basically mean that it's not something. And we're going to go to our logic again, grab those, and we're going to place those down directly onto the two parts right here. Now that what we need to do is we need to get the um, a math operator for testing if it's a certain logic, like a certain logic range. So we're going to go logic and grab the dark blue one. We're going to place that down here. We're going to test if it is equal to or, or pardon me, we're going to test for if, if it's greater than. So the one without the, the line underneath, the, the one with the line underneath is equal to or greater than. We just want to test if it's greater than zero. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go to our block procedures and then data. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and we want the get number of items from slot and then the slot number of block and then X, Y, and Z. So we're going to grab this one. We're going to set this ID to one for our input slot. And then what we need to do is work on the actual smelting result part. So what we need to do for that is we're going to go to logic again, grab a item operator. Place that down here and then we actually need to go to item procedures and go to data and then we're going to scroll down until we find the smelting result which is down here it should say uh, get smelting result of provided item stack we're going to delete the item stack we don't need that and we're going to place that right on the first part here now we need to go back to our block procedures and go to our data and we're going to scroll all the way down until we get to the part where it says get a copy of item from slot of slot of or pardon me of block at and then x y and z part we're going to set this to our input slot again and we're going to put that on the smelting result for the recipe last thing that we need to do is go to minecraft components and scroll down until it says empty item stack this is going to test if the item stack is basically empty or error. Um, error also works if you will need to test for it that way. Um, you can go ahead and just create a item selector and then select error. It does basically the same thing. But we're just going to use this block because it's newer and it's easier to work with. And it actually says what it's actually doing. So it just makes it a little bit easier. All right, so once we've done that, what we can do is we can go ahead and duplicate this, place that onto the not block down below. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to use external inputs for this one, just so it's a little bit easier to see how it's working. We're just making sure that this um, item from the output slot, or pardon me, the input slot is not the same as the smelting result. So we're just grabbing the same block right here and we're going to put it right on to the equal part. So we're testing if those aren't the same. And then lastly, what we're doing is we're testing if for the slot and slot zero. So we can actually just grab the block from here. Everything that we need is actually right on this line right here. So we can grab this whole entire thing and just drop it down here. We're gonna test if it's equal to zero. 
and we're going to set the ID for this one to zero. Everything else is set up so far correctly. Next, what we need to do is we need to duplicate this again, and we're going to put that here, and we're going to go external inputs, and we're going to set the value of this is should be less than, and then we're going to remove the number value right here, and we're going to get the maximum stack size. To find that block, what you need to do is go under your item procedures again, data, and then you're going to scroll down until you see get maximum stack size of provided item stack. I'm going to drop that down right here. And then we need the smelting results so we can just duplicate that from this part right here. And everything is set up correctly now. Okay, so last thing you need to do is actually put it on the green block. And once that's done, you can move on to the next part. So we need to then go back to our block procedures and we're going to start with the, we'll start with the fuel procedure because that's actually running when we have the furnace on. Um, we have the fuel procedure running first and then we have the smelting procedure. So we'll, this is basically the update tick for the furnace on. So all I'm doing right here is just calling um, external procedures uh, to do that, what we can do is we can go ahead and go to the advanced tab, get a call procedure, the one with the without the X, Y, and Z, and then we're going to just select our procedure for that particular one. So in we just select it from the drop down list. Now, if you have a lot of procedures, you might want to search for the name. So furnace, uh, furnace fuel. And then we would want to set up the one for the uh, smelting recipe as well, which is smelting procedure. So this one right here. So for those two blocks, uh, what we need to do is actually cover those particular procedures. They're their own procedures. I broke it up into two parts because it just made it a lot easier to cover in the tutorial. It could technically be in the same uh, procedure. There wouldn't really be any problem having it in there. Um, but again, just to make things a little more simple for recording and everything like that, I've put them into two separate ones. So we'll cover the fuel one first and it's the larger of the two. Um, so there's a lot going on here. Uh, what we need to do is we need to uh, see how this is working. So I'm going to break down what it's doing first and then we'll cover how to build it in a sec. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm actually testing if the fuel is greater than zero. So for the fuel, what this is doing is it's counting down. Um, we want to make sure that when the fuel is set, that it will slowly count down until it reaches zero. When it's zero, then what we're going to do is run this section of the procedure. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on in this particular part. But if it's not zero, then it's obviously going to be above zero. And we want to basically just decrease the fuel time uh, by one every tick. So basically that's what's happening here. We're just subtracting one every time. Uh, that the value is above zero and when it is zero then what we're doing is we're going to um, run our smelting result again this is the procedure that we just covered and we're just running this as a call block uh, for the result which allows us to get the return value that we turned in here so all this is basically just calculating the um, if it can actually basically uh, convert the item. And then what we're doing is we're going to get the number from the output slot and we're testing if it is uh, equal to or greater than zero. And, oh, pardon me, this is the fuel slot. That's right, if we go to, so the fuel slot is slot zero. So what we need to do is we need to actually, we're testing if the fuel slot has an item that is, um, in the fuel slot itself and then what we're doing is we're testing if that is part of the fuel tag now remember last episode what we did was there was three tags that i had i had one for coal one for planks and then the other one for fuel so this is basically how it's basically set up so first tag what we're testing for is if 
any of those particular other tags that we have are in that particular category. If it's not in that category, we don't want to run this entire procedure. Instead, what we're doing is we're just going to go ahead and uh, set the state uh, to the off state. So to do that, we need to disable the maximum or max fuel. We're setting that value to negative uh, one. That will make sense in a second. And then fuel is also getting set to negative one because we can't just keep it running at zero because we're using zero, right? So we want to set it to negative one in order to um, turn. So I'm not sure if that makes sense. Um, basically our fuel here is set through the fuel that we're basically here. And then we're, our item is being removed. So it goes, um, gets subtracted by one and then it basically runs again. That's the best I can explain it. Um, it'll make a little bit more sense once you actually play around with it a little bit. I do suggest experimenting with the different parts, maybe even printing out things uh, to see how things work. Uh, you could do um, the values, you could go to the text and then print out the value of say the fuel timer and then basically run it every time here. And then you can see how this actually works and stuff like that. You can do that any part uh, to see how things work. You can print out any value like that. And it'll print it out to console when you're in the game. So no harm in testing it that way. So to actually design this, uh, there's a lot of parts uh, that build up to it. So we'll cover it right now. We need an if statement, and then we're going to go ahead and add an else if statement for this one. We also need a, another if statement in the bottom part and we're going to replace this one with an else statement. In the inner part up here, um, what we need is a um, else and else, else or if, else, if, and else, so like that. So this is the general layout for the if statements. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get the uh, math operator. So we're going to grab this one again, test if it is greater than, and then we're going to grab a number, testing if it's greater than zero, and then our block procedures, data, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom here. We're going to type the name for this to be fuel. So that's really important for this one. And then we're going to go to block actions and grab the MBT number one. And we're going to call this one fuel as well. Move whoop, move a little bit further over this way so it's a little easier to program all this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab a math operator. And this is the one from the math tab. And we're going to basically set this to a subtraction. And we're going to set that to minus one. Place that on here. And then we're going to grab the uh, operator from here just so it's in the same spot and that's this part right up at the top here that's the first line of code then what we need to do is we're going to duplicate that top one we're going to place this here and we're going to set this to equals so if it need if the fuel is equal to zero then we want to go ahead and grab an and statement so we're going to need a couple and statements for this one we're going to go with and I used three end statements and then we're going to go to our advanced tab and we're going to scroll down until we get call procedure. We're going to place that one down right here. This is the logic value because we used a logic operator for the return value. So once we've done that, we can basically select our procedure. Now I have other display conditions uh, for conditions here that use a return a logic variable. So a lot of these are not going to be set up at this very point for you. Um, in the case of this one, we just want to get the smelting result for that part. And then what we need is to get the output slot item. And we're testing if that is, uh, oh, pardon me, the fuel slot item. And we're testing if it's greater than zero. So first thing that we need to do is grab a math operator and we're going to test if it's greater than 
or get our number operator there or number block and then we're going to go to our data and we're going to scroll all the way down until we get to get number of items in slot and we're going to set this to our fuel slot which is slot 2 again we can use this as a reference that's our slot 2 there and then we need to get the tag so to find that we can find it under the item procedures and then we're going to go to data and then we're going to grab the uh, is provided item stack in item tags as and then we're going to basically fill out our um, our main fuel tag for this one and this should be under your own namespace and then followed by the tag that it's called so one other thing that we need to do is make sure that the slot is not a provided item stack we're going to test if the block uh, item in slots to our fuel slot for that one so again under data scroll all the way down and it's the red block right here so that part's done uh, we got the condition there all set up we might as well set up the else statement for the block state next because that's going to run after if this part isn't true so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just grab this block right here and we're going to remove this part and we need our max fuel so i'm going to grab the name for that put it in here and we're going to set this to negative one and we want our fuel value to be negative one as well and we want our variable for smelting to be zero so this should reset everything uh, normally and then we need to replace the block so we're going to go under block actions grab replace block and then we're going to make sure that it keeps the mbt so we're going to check that box and then we're going to set our off state for the block which is a different block it's not really a block state but it's a block that we're turning it to the off version so once that is done that's literally all there is to that part now we just need to do this part right in here so the next thing that we need to get is the tags for that particular one so we can just duplicate that off of this block right here and we're going to copy the tags that we want for our coal <clears throat> and our planks so we're just setting the plank tag again this should be under your namespace followed by the uh, tag that you've set your uh, field to and this should be both for the output slot and then what we need to do is set the maximum fuel so we can already do that by just moving these blocks up directly to here so coal is 1600 and that's all that we need to do for that part and then the other one is uh, i think 300 ticks so we can just duplicate these down and we're going to set this to uh, 300 here and 300 and then the last part what we're doing in this else statement is just setting the default value of what that time should be if there is an item in the same tag for the fuel but not in a specific tag so we're going to set that to a default 300 just for the same as planks and that'll be good enough lastly we, what we need to do is actually subtract the item from the slot so we're going to go to block actions and then we're going to go and scroll down to the one where it says set one and then there's an item block in slot zero of block and then x y and z blah 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 all right so we're going to grab that one and we're going to get the um, output slot for the inventory but we're going to actually go to external inputs first just so it's a little bit easier to work with so we're going to delete that item selector and we're going to grab our output slot for, or the item from our output slot or for fuel slot pardon me and we're going to go ahead and delete the actually we'll keep this one we're also going to set in slot to zero or to our 
fuel slot down here where it says in slot here. Uh, that will make sure that it's uh, coordinating for the entire output or the entire fuel slot. So we want to make sure that the fuel is being subtracted uh, when we're re resetting the fuel time. So we want to basically do that, right? And lastly, what we need to do is get the amount of items in that particular fuel slot. And we're going to go ahead and grab a math operator, place that down on the set value, get this the value that it currently is, and then subtract this by one. And that's all there is to that particular procedure. Thank goodness. I can't, man, I can't imagine how much more time I could have spent actually explaining that one. All right, so that's basically the exact same thing as you can see here. Um, this is really why I don't explain how to do all the blocks. I'd rather do individual tutorials for finding each individual blocks, but I understand that it's hard for most people to actually locate them. So I'm trying, I'm trying. All right, let's go ahead and do the last procedure. Um, well, not really the last, there's one more after this. If we go to block procedures, we have the smelting procedure itself, which is a little bit easier to cover. Um, it's not too complicated. What it's doing here is we're testing if the um, fuel is greater than negative one. So basically if it's equal to zero or higher, if the fuel value is higher or equal to zero, if that's true, what we're doing is we're testing as well as the smelting result. Uh, reason for that is we want to make sure that when we're smelting the item, we can actually get the smelting result and put it into the proper slot. So we need to make sure that part's all set up. Next, what we're doing is we're basically getting the smelting variable that we set in the other part, and we're getting the maximum smelt smelting which is, uh, we're testing if it's the same value, right? Um, yeah, if it's the same value as the smelting um, value. So basically this timer counts up. We can see that by the plus sign right here and we're adding one every tick. Every time the item is converted from the um, input slot to the output slot, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and set the timer for the smelting to zero again. Uh, the reason why we have this set to maximum smelting is we need to determine if the, I think something's not correct on this, one second. Okay, so the smelting time is actually the maximum smelty time is the duration of how long it should smelt for. So what we're doing is we're testing if the smelting time is the full duration that it should smelt for. And then we're basically removing the item. Uh, pardon me. We're adding the item to the output slot. And then we're removing the item from the input slot. And then what we're doing is resetting the smelting time to zero. And then lastly, the last part in the else statement for this part right here, if it's not the same value as the smelting uh, maximum smelting time, we're just going to increase that value by one. So for the smelting variable. And that basically just gets everything um, removed and shifted around for the variables and moves the items to this, the output slot. This requires no recipe doing it this way, so it's already getting all the recipes and stuff from the base game because we're using the smelting result here. And we're just subtracting the value for the same item in the input slot. So this is just removing the input slot item and this is getting the smelting result for the input item and putting it into the output slot, which is slot zero. We can check our slots here and this is output fuel and then this is our input all right so to build this what we need is we need an if statement we actually need two of these and the second one on the inner part we're going to use an else statement and then we need an and block so we've already covered how to locate those and we're going to just put it in a position like this we need a math 
operator uh, for logic. We're testing if that value is above um, negative one. So if it's zero or higher, and then what we need to do is go to data for block procedures and grab our MBT variable. And we're just gonna set this value to fuel. Lastly, what we need to do is go to the advance and we're gonna get that procedure that uh, returns the smelting result. So we're going to just set the advanced return logic and set it to our smelting result condition. And then for the inner part here, what we need to do is we need to test if the um, smelting time is equal to the maximum smelting time. So we need to go to logic, grab this one again. We're just gonna put it on external input. We're not gonna actually change the equal sign this time. We're going to get the two blocks here and we're going to test for smelting for the top one and then maximum smelting for the bottom one. All right, so that part's really done. Uh, we just need to get the actual event parts in place. So the first one that we're gonna start with is the actual uh, slot selectors uh, or slot blocks, which we can find under block actions. And then it's this block right here. And we're going to go in external input. So it's like this. And what we want is to adjust these things here. So what I'm gonna do is to actually delete this. We don't need that. We're gonna make sure this is still in slot zero for our output slot. And then what we want to do is we want to get our smelting result. So we're gonna go item procedures, data, and scroll all the way down to the bottom again. You might have to look for it, but it should be in this particular folder um, for the item data. And then we're gonna remove the provided item stack. And then we're going to go back to block data or block procedures data, and then we're gonna grab our slot here. And we're gonna set this to slot one because we want it from our input slot, which is this one right here. So once we've done that, we can start working on the item count. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add a math operator and we're basically increasing this by one. And we want to go to data, scroll down to the bottom again and we're gonna grab this one right under the, um, what do you call it, the uh, item selector that we had. And we're gonna set this to the default zero, so we don't need to actually set the ID for that one because it's already the output slot. So that's basically that part here. That's um, adding to the output slot for the smelting result. And then what we need to do is duplicate that. And then we're gonna put that down here and we're gonna set this all to the one for the IDs. So this should all be equal to the input. We're actually gonna remove the smelting result and we're going to put the just the regular item there and we're gonna subtract rather than add. So it removes one item from the slot itself. And then lastly, uh, we need to reset the smelting time to zero. So we're going to go to block actions, grab a op or MPT tag here. And we're gonna just grab our smelting time, our smelting variable name and place it like that. And it should be set up like that. And there's just one more thing that we need to do for this particular procedure. And that's basically duplicate this block again. I'm gonna place it here and we need a math operator and we're going to place it like this and add one and we're going to place it on to there and then we need to get our smelting tag we can just grab it from the top here and we'll place it down here like that so it should look whoop, uh, when it's not deleted it should look like something so it should look exactly the same like this so everything's set up correctly as you can see so that's that per particular one. We only have one procedure left that we need to actually cover and that's for when the update tick is off or for the off block. So our off block has a update tick as well. This one's not as complex uh, to actually set up. All it's doing here is we're testing if the number of items in our input slot is greater than zero 
if the output slot uh, or pardon me fuel slot is greater than zero and then we're testing if the uh, item in the fuel slot is in the fuel tag and then lastly what we're testing is uh, if the item has a smelting result so again that procedure that we first started with uh, the smelting result so this one right here with the return block so that's basically what we're testing here we're then setting our fuel time to zero so basically what this will do is it'll make sure to enable the fuel time so it can run that first position or first uh, procedure when it starts uh, working on the fuel script fuel script right here so basically we need to make sure that the fuel is actually set to zero so we can actually set the fuel if it's negative one this won't actually run anything right so we want to make sure that when it's enabled we need to have a, either a value above zero or at zero and that's why we've set it to negative one when it basically uh, shouldn't smelt anything later on right because we want to make sure that it disables that and that's basically what we're doing here is we're just re-enabling it and then we're going to set it to the on state same thing that we did with turning the block to the off state so we're just setting the on block and we're making sure that the mbt stays the same and it keeps the rotation so to design this procedure all we need to do is we need to grab an if statement just one single if statement that's all we need and then we're going to need a bunch of and blocks so we're going to grab a logic uh, op operator and we're just going to add three end blocks here like that and then we need a math operator uh, this one and we're going to test if it is greater than and then we need a number operator or a number block test if it's greater than zero and we need a number from slot so we're going to go to block procedures grab the number one down below so we're testing if it is slot one and we can duplicate this for the next uh, line and we're going to test if this is slot two for our few slot and then we need to test for the tag so again item tags are under the item procedures and we're going to grab this one right here remove the item stack procedure one i'm just going to set the fuel tag name right here and then we need to get the item uh, block for from the data tab so we're going to scroll down all the way down here i'm hoping that you know where all these blocks are by now because we're basically using a lot of the same ones over and over again um, once you get the hang of how all those particular ones work it becomes easier to find them so just keep doing it until you find it and over time you'll learn how to navigate the procedure system so then we have to set this to our fuel um, slot ID. So we're going to set that right here. Go to the advanced tab, scroll all the way down to the call procedure, and we're going to call the return value, and we're going to set the smelting result condition. And then all the condition part is taken care of. We just need to set the fuel. So we're going to block procedures, actions, and then we're going to set the fuel to zero so it can actually set the fuel up and start the smelting process and then we just need to replace the block so this is under actions replace block and we're going to set our on block for this one and make sure that the mbt is enabled by default it's disabled so make sure that you enable it or all your variables are going to get reset so you don't want that to happen um, and make sure this keeps state so it keeps the rotation and it doesn't just set it to like north or something uh, You want it to keep both the MBT and the um, state that it's in. So that's all there is to that um, I think that we've covered all of them now. I'm just gonna go over this quickly just to make sure that I didn't miss anything Yep, that was all the procedures for the blocks at least so again when you're linking all these procedures up uh, you only have the update tick for the on version. This calls the furnace uh, fuel procedure and the smelting procedure directly after. They need to be in that particular order. So the fuel is added immediately and then the smelting per begins. 
Um, if it's around like that, it might not work as efficiently. And if it's like this, it will work a little bit more efficiently. So that's for the on procedure or on furnace. And then the off furnace has its own update tick. We just covered that one. And the smelting um, result condition is used throughout a few of them. So I just put it into one procedure so it was more compact and it didn't have to keep using the code. This way, if we update the condition um, in this procedure, then it will synchronize across all of the other uh, procedures that it, it's in. And we don't need to worry about um, something not syncing up or having to update multiple pers multiple procedures just to fix this one line of code, which we're using across like multiple ones. So if we have a mistake in here that needs to be fixed, we can just update this one and not worry about updating the other ones. It's really that simple. So that's why we're returning the value. It's also more efficient to do it that way because then you don't need to worry about um, having to have extra code all over the place and then synchronizing it all up. Really try to uh, do that more often when you have um, things that repeat. Uh, you can just return the value and then basically get the reva return value of the re return block, which we've done in some of these procedures like this one right here, we're just returning that value. And it's the same exact procedure uh, this is just basically no different than having this on the um, block right here uh, for that condition. It's just compact and it will synchronize across all your procedures. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, next part, part three, uh, which will be released at the same time as the other two videos. Um, We'll be covering the GUI uh, display conditions, which are these parts right here. We'll be covering all those, which shouldn't take as long as today, thankfully. Um, hopefully I'll be more rested by that day though. <laughs> I'm really tired and I still have one more video to record. So uh, not for Am Creator, thankfully, but um, for gaming, which is going to take another like half an hour or something like that. But. Anyhow, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.